Jane Morgan, and I telephoned for an appointment. And I have to be back to my office at a quarter to six. Your address, Miss Morgan? 2795 West 9th Street, apartment 2C. Telephone? Finally, Fitzroy 5103. Your occupation? Radio promotion. I'm with the Parker Advertising Agency. And will you please explain to the doctor that I have to be... <gasps> Wait over there, please. I told you I had to be back at my office at a quarter to six. Doctor is working as fast as possible. You know you can get well waiting. If you'd let me know how long it was going to be, I could have gone to another doctor. Yes, doctor? Yes, doctor. Doctor, we'll see you now, Miss Morgan. I've been waiting hours to see you. Sit down, please. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Well, my, my throat is sore, and I feel just awful, and I, I think I have the flu. It's quite a bit of a round, but let's see. In there, please. me off guard. Have you thought of selling that cough to a bull moose? I'm sorry. It just pops out. If you feel like coughing again, please use this. Now, if you will remove your coat. And your blouse. I can't. I beg your pardon. I didn't wear. I haven't any. I mean, you're so young. Breathe in and out. Must have been a fever that made me talk so stupidly. I beg your pardon? If it will be easier for you with a blouse off. Exhale. Now, you're as bad as your father was about his health. I'll get it. Dr. Wright's residence. Oh. This is Miss Evans of the Daily Mirror. Is this Mrs. Wright? Yes, this is Mrs. Wright. Oh. Well, you see, we're conducting a poll among doctor's wives along the lines of, quote, do doctors make good husbands, unquote? Well, I happen to be a doctor's widow. And if this is in reference to my son, his wife can't be quoted because he hasn't any wife, quote or unquote. Oh, I beg your pardon. Really, I do. Thank you so much. And, uh, cheerio. This is Jane Morgan. Fine. I mean, you told me to call you if I felt worse. I, I'm sure I am. 
What? All over. It's hard to describe. You will? Yes. 2795 West 9th Street, apartment 2C. Good. Oh, come in, Doctor. You shouldn't be on your feet, Miss Morgan. What should I have done? Crawl to the door? That uh, thing you're wearing, don't you know it's a pneumonia trap? Yes, Doctor. Has you got something heavier? Yes, Doctor. Well, get into it after I leave. That's exactly what I was going to do. Isn't there more light in here? Pulse is normal. And I'll make a bet your fever's gone. Well, you sound as though that's bad. But you said you were feeling worse. That was half an hour ago. I can't help it if I get better. How's your cough? Your medicine seems to work. I've sounded the mating call just once since I took it. I apologize for wasting your time. May I go to work tomorrow? Well, what kind of work? Radio promotion. It's a little hard to explain, but part of it's writing those radio jingles. People scream at you every 15 minutes. It's... A radio jingle writer in the flesh. How did you ever get to my office? Something my mother taught me. I called the nearest hospital, described my symptoms, asked for a doctor, and they recommended you. I didn't know they rated me so highly. They recommended five doctors. You were the fifth. But I went to you. Well, at least I'm on the list. May I ask why you picked me? Well, according to my mother's theory, you'd probably be young and struggling, wouldn't cost too much, and would have the time and patience to make night calls. May I go to work tomorrow? Your mother's theory has x-ray eyes. Yes, you can go to work in the morning, providing you'll spend most of your time on your, I mean, off your feet. Give me a call in a day or so. I'd much prefer it if you'd call me. Dinner Friday? I'll call. Thank you, Doctor. That's a very pretty nightgown. Oh, thank you again, Doctor. How's your cough? Gone completely. Do you mind if I make one house call before dinner? It's right on the way. Not at all. Did you have a hard day today? Mm, fairly. Surgery must be quite an ordeal. Surgery? Oh, no, I live at Brighter Boys. I don't do surgery. Sorry you're disappointed in me. If you'd like, I'll stop the car so you can get out. Oh, I don't know why I thought of you as a surgeon. Miss 
is the house call I mentioned. It'll only take about five minutes. The radio works. This is it, cats. 60 minutes of solid jive. And when I say solid, I mean we've got platters so hot the shellac is bubbly. So throw your furniture out the window and grab your partner. Get a good hold, fella, because you've got to hang on to her for one whole hour. Let's go. Well, kids, you've had it, and I hope you like it. So plant me now and dig me tomorrow at the same old time for another solid hour of gone stuff. Now, don't forget to send in for your Peter Pepper Goof and Feather membership button. Address your card or letter to Head Goof Peter Pepper... Dr. Wright. Bill. So what? I'm sorry I was late. Late? If you're going to apologize for anything, try to explain that absent-minded doctors always forget they left a lady in the car and always drive off without her. Did I do that? Leaving me to chase the car like a mongrel dog, barking my head off. I thought you'd gone. I thought you got tired of waiting and gone home. If you thought that, why didn't you come straight here? That was over two hours ago. Well, I got an emergency call while I was in the apartment. Well, this is awful. Where were you when I got back to the car? Walking, trying to get some circulation in my body after one long frozen hour in that icebox you call a car. Oh, what a mess. You smell something burning? <sighs> now are you satisfied? What? Look at me. Look at me. Just as the Almighty made me. Now are you satisfied? I've been looking at you ever since I came in. What is burning? Oh, who cares? Clean up your eggs a la charcoal. This is a new batch. Will you dine with me? I believe you asked me that once before. You're a heel. No, I'm not, but I am a goon. I shouldn't have driven off without looking two blocks in all directions. But there was that emergency call. There's jam in the refrigerator. You all right? Time with the eggs? You were cute when you let me in. You were cute as the almighty major. But now you're beautiful. I like you both ways. If you use cream, I haven't any. I suppose you won't believe this, but I was planning on doing it up brown tonight. We get reservations at the Oak Room. We did? Mm-hmm. It's the only place in town where a head waiter recognizes me. 
It's because I tipped him five dollars once at an alumni dinner. The only trouble is that he recognizes me as a Mr. Drudnick. Who's Mr. Drudnick? I don't know. Probably the fellow behind me that night. It's a very hard name to forget. Will you forgive me? Will you let Mr. Drudnick take you to dinner real soon? I don't know. I might. I suppose I should apologize for enjoying this, but it's the first food I've had since breakfast. Is your mother a good cook? Oh, wonderful. How does you know about her? Well, people do have mothers, don't they? Where are your folks? I lost them both in an accident about five years ago. You've been on your own ever since? Well, I was grown when it happened. I already had a job. I guess an apartment like this can get to be a pretty lonely place, huh? Yes, it can. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, he is. Just a moment. It's for you. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I always have to leave a number. Is Dr. Wright speaking? Oh. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Ilshanky. But, Mrs. Ilshanky, he isn't dying. If you'll simply give him two of those small brown pills and... All right, Mrs. Ilshanky. I'll be over in about ten minutes. Oh, the phone is new. I haven't arranged the furniture right yet. Mr. Ilshanky is dying again. That man dies on an average of four nights a week. No. Oh. Thanks. I've got to be at the hospital tomorrow night. How about dinner the next night? I'll let you know. When? Now. The answer is yes. Just a quick house call. Oh, no, you don't. I'll be back in five minutes. Bill Wright, I refuse to spend the best years of my life sitting alone in a car unless... Unless what? Unless you assure me right here and now that your intentions are serious. You mean... marriage? I mean exactly that. It's a deal. I'll be back in five minutes. I was going to ask you tonight anyway. You were? Uh-huh. Would you do me a favor? What? Ask me when you get back. Sure. I guess it would make us both feel more normal. Back again, huh? Back again for another 60 minutes of solid jive with your old pal, Peter Pepper. Silly, but I feel just like I did on my first day in school. Of course it's silly. Mother's just another human being. She's probably spent the whole day in the kitchen trying to impress you with a fancy dinner. Just exactly what did she say when you told her about us? Oh, I honestly don't remember. I think she said, oh, or something. Great. Mother? Mother! Oh, Bill, I'm so sorry. I tried to reach you at the office. What's the matter? And this is Jane, of course. I'm very happy to know you. I'm so embarrassed about dinner, my dear. What's wrong? I have a 
splitting headache. Nothing seemed to help it. I, I started to prepare dinner, then nausea set in. I do feel a little better now, though, and if you wouldn't mind a very late dinner... Oh, I wouldn't think of letting you put yourself to that trouble. Uh, Bill and I can have dinner out. How's the nausea now? Oh, stop acting like a doctor. I'll be all right. Sit down, my dear. You take a phenobarbital tablet and get back in bed where you belong. Well, if you're going out, you better freshen up a bit. At least I can visit with Jane for a minute or two. Well, it's too late to get a reservation at the Oak Room, but we can find a good restaurant. Excuse me. My dear, I'm going to have to be very abrupt. I've checked with Bill about your background and such, and I can save you an enormous amount of heartache. You're going into this too quickly before you've had time to think things out. I can see you don't approve of our marriage. I'm trying to help you. You've no idea what it is to be a doctor's wife. What's so unusual about a doctor? He's a man. He's a man of a special breed. And only a woman of a special breed can be happy with him. I don't believe that. A woman of normal intelligence can adapt herself to any condition. Very well. But remember, it was for your sake I tried to warn you. I suppose I should thank you. No, no, you have a perfect right to dislike me. But I promise you one thing. From this moment on, there'll be no interference from me. For that, I can thank you. By the way, has Bill mentioned Helen? Helen? Hmm. I can see he hasn't. Well, everything in its own good time. Now, you get back in bed where you belong. Bill, uh, perhaps Jane would like to freshen up a bit. No, thank you. Jane? Yes? Woman to woman. All right. Secrets already? Secrets. Well, that was quick. Good night, Mother. Good night. This is the quietest I've ever seen you. Did Mother say something to upset you? Not a thing. Besides, I'm a lady of my word about secrets. Except, who is Helen? What did she say about Helen? She just mentioned the name and said that you would probably mention her eventually. My mother's a wonderful woman, but sometimes what goes on in her mind... I asked you about Helen. And I'm trying to figure why I should mention her to you. Her name is Helen Porter. She worked in my office as a technician to get enough money to complete her medical school. I promised that when she finished her internship, I'd take her into the office as my associate. Why did you promise that? Well, because I, I know how hard it is to get started. Besides, she's a very brilliant woman. Now, do you see any reason why I should have mentioned her before? I certainly do. Is she attractive? I'd say yes. But before you ask if we had any particular feelings towards each other, I'll tell you no, so you won't have to ask. Does she know that? What? When will she finish her internship? Oh, that won't be for a year and a half or so. She's studying in the East. Now, if you don't mind, I much prefer to talk about you. You know, some people think a doctor's wife should be a special kind of woman. Who thinks that? I've heard it. And in a way, I agree. Jane, a doctor's wife isn't all she's cracked up to be in novels. I mean, a doctor's office is one thing and his home another, a separate thing. Do you understand that? That's the way it is in any marriage, if the wife creates that dividing line between home and office with her own indifference. But I intend to dedicate my life to you and your work. And there'll be no dividing line. Doesn't that make sense? Sense? Things will work out all right. I guess we both need food. Wilt thou obey him and serve him, love, honor, and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live. Hello. I will. Dr. Wright. William Wright, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance? In the I'm very sorry, but he's still busy getting married. Wilt thou love her, comfort her? Really? Honor and keep her? Yes, ma'am. In sickness? I'll tell him. Your husband is dying. And forsaking. <laughs>
wonderful. A honeymoon and no telephone. I'm sorry. How did you happen to pick Detroit? You love it. Bill. Yes? Being a doctor must be quite a strain. That it is. You... You aren't addicted to anything, are you? Addicted? Of course not. Well, what were those things you just swallowed? Oh, they were soda tablets. I have hyperacidity. Being near you makes me cook. Is that bad, hyperacidity? No, it's a trick stomach. Forget it. Why did you pick Detroit for our honeymoon? I told you you'd love it, and you will. I don't doubt it. But I'm the only woman I've ever heard of who's going to Detroit on a honeymoon. You won't be angry? I mean, about the fact that there just happens to be a medical convention there? Why not at all? We can kill two birds with one stone. Sure, that's right. A gallstone. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Well, so really, I get a chance to attend a convention, and they do mean a lot to a doctor. Like what? Well, a convention brings you up to date on new medical procedure. And you have a chance to hear the outstanding men in your field. And? And you finally return to your practice with the feeling that, although you haven't had a chance to study as much as you would have liked to, you're not as far behind as you thought you were. Strange talk for a honeymoon, isn't it? Forgive me, dear. For a moment, I forgot I'm a doctor's wife. And now that you're a husband, you have a right to know that my girdle is killing me. If you'll excuse me for a minute, be right. If you like, I'll knock before I come out. This is Dr. Wright. Yes. Not literature, philosophy or something? A real old-fashioned pill doctor? M.D. There's a woman up ahead passed out cold. Looks like a heart attack to me. I'll be right with you. A fine thing, even on a train. You can't ignore an unconscious woman, darling. You're certainly ignoring a conscious one. If you're not back in an hour, I mustn't worry. Isn't it a beauty? I don't even want to look at it. It only reminds me that we have to find one half as good. Get out. This is it. That house is ours? For one whole year, furnished. I got it from a GP who had to leave town. What's a GP? A grateful patient. They're the ones who make doctoring worthwhile. And you didn't say a word all during our lovely honeymoon. You let me sit in a lonely hotel room and worry about where we were going to live. Well, I figured I'd give you something to do while I was attending those lectures. But my apartment. I'll have to find someone to take over the lease. It's all taken care of. I described it to my nurse before we left, and she took it on the spot. There is a bathroom, isn't there? Mother traded mine for a smaller one in the same building. Finding a house like this. Bill, I'm afraid I married a genius. I did do pretty well, didn't I? Hello, Suki. Welcome home, Doctor. Thank you. Jane, this is Suki. You'll help you after your school hours. Suki, this is Mrs. Wright. Hello, Suki. I've placed the doctor's clothes in his closet with great care. You're a doll. Oh. Oh. I told Suki not to put those medical books away because I want them in a certain order. Oh, Bill, it's wonderful. I'll carry these bags upstairs while you look around. I think you'll like all of it. 
I heard voices, so I thought I'd better start pouring. James? I'm happy to know you. I'm Pete Roberts, obstetrician. You'll probably be using me one of these days. <laughs> oh, Bill asked Maggie and me to bring your things over from your apartment. She's upstairs now, hanging up your stuff. Those rags? I took all my good things with me on the trip. Oh, it's a pleasure to know you, Dr. Roberts. Bill has mentioned you and, and uh, Maggie? Maggie often. <laughs> You're a sweet little liar. Tell Bill where I am, please. Hello, Jane. I'm Maggie. Hello. I guess I'm putting these things away in exactly the wrong order. Maggie's peach wife. Did you meet him? Yes, in the kitchen just now. Good. I'll go downstairs and say hello and get the rest of the luggage. <laughs> you know, I've got one of these robes. <laughs> I keep throwing it away and it keeps jumping right back in my closet again. They're wonderful on a cold morning in a dirty kitchen. There's a flannel nightgown in that pile you'll love. I only wear it when I'm absolutely sure I'm not going to be found in bed. Dead. Oh, you lucky dog, you. I know, he's wonderful. Oh, no, I'm not talking about Bill. I mean, you've got a real home with rooms in it and a part-time maid. Pete and I are living on the top floor of a kennel next to the ventilating flue of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Pete doesn't mind. Of course, he's only there when he's asleep. Uh-huh. This is it? That's it. Yes, well, what happened over here? I woke up one morning with one knee sticking through the neck. <laughs> that part-time maid you mentioned looks to me like an adolescent statue, but we are very lucky about the house. And Bill has lots of room to entertain his friends, and I love that fireplace in the living room, where we can relax at night and discuss Bill's work. <laughs> well, you're kidding, aren't you? Kidding? Oh, nothing at all. I saw a wire sticking out. Hello? Yes, just a moment. Bill! Wait! Telephone! I couldn't even find the telephone. The patient calls as though we've been living here for years. Sure. Ah, um, long evenings sitting by the fire, discussing Bill's work. I only knew one doctor's wife who discussed his work. She was a ventriloquist. A husband's a husband, no matter what else he is, and a home is what you make it. Pardon me, but doctors wise, for some strange reason, don't seem to realize that. I have a plan, and I'm sure it's going to work. Honey, what a hit in the head you're going to get. Peptic ulcer is the sharply demarcated loss of... tissue which... tissue which begins in the gastric or duodenal mucosa and extends through the submucosa. Peptic ulcer is the sharply demarcated loss of tissue which begins in the uh, duodenal mucosa and extends through the submucosa. Did you get the Roquefort cheese? No cheese of that name in the store. But I was going to serve Roquefort cheese and potato chips with the cocktails. I fix. Many times I work at cocktail parties making sandwich with the open face. For reasons which are not understood, males are afflicted three or four times more than females. Yes, really. I'll take those, Suki. You may have a point there, Todd, but I could say, in fact, I will say that angina is also simulated Would anyone care for one of Suki's open faces for the cocktail? Yes, I believe they're made of toothpaste. You did? You know, gentlemen, peptic ulcers, which begin in the mucosa, extend not only through the submucosa, but may even penetrate into the uh, muscularis. Excuse me. I'll be back. My poor boy. I believe I was saying that Angina Hello? Oh, Pete. Pete, what are you... No, Bill isn't here yet. I can't under... Yes, I'll have him call you. But dinner's just about ready, and I was wondering when you... Hello? Hello? Was that my husband? 
Yes, he asked me to have Bill call him, and then he hung up on me. Oh, well, he's probably having trouble with one of his biddies. Honey, how about feeding this hungry mob? Without Bill? Why, I arranged this dinner for him. Well, then, shall we join the ladies? For a little small talk. Oh, yes, sir. I read a very interesting report on an endocarditis case the other day. Speaking of ulcers, if a peptic ulcer is the sharply demarcated loss of tissue which begins in the mucosa... Naturally. Frank and Hamilton report the successful repair of a hernia of the diaphragm in which there was penetrating ulcer. Well, in a case like that, the ulcer was obviously caused by embolism of the gastric mucosa. Jane, I wish you'd show that green sweater you've knitted to Mildred. Later. Gentlemen, I think it's tremendously interesting that ulcers result from embolism of the gastric mucosa. You said that before. Oh, oh, did I? Is there something on your mind, child? Why are you quoting a discarded theory from an obviously dated medical book? Dated? From what you've memorized, I'd guess it was printed about 1905. 1905? Well, excuse me, please. I guess the men seem kind of rude to you, honey. But they're talking medicine. And you just shouldn't have been over there. One of the first things a doctor promises when he takes his oath is don't ever tell your wife or anybody's wife anything. Including what time he'll be home to dinner. <laughs> but I'm interested in medicine. And how are you going to find out anything if you don't listen? You spend the best years of your life studying. Like Helen's doing. You're very fond of Helen, aren't you, Mother? Some of us simply believe that doctors should consider very carefully before marrying outside the profession. The point is, honey, that listening to doctors' conversations can be dangerous. You might overhear something that you don't think is important and then repeat it in the wrong place. Hello, everybody. Pete wants you to call him maternity. Thanks, Maggie. Bill. Well, hello, Donna. You're two hours late. Hmm? That was administered. Dr. Roberts, maternity, please. I wonder if this is about that Jensen. Did you say I was late? late. Pete. Bill. Yes? Yes. Well, sure, I'll be right over. No! Now? I won't be long. Save something for me. Goodbye, all. Bye. The dinner is still ready. Should I serve it? Nice. Yes. Although in using Believe it or not, dinner is served. Dr. Morgan speaking. Dr. Jones speaking. Dr. Tracy speaking. Well, here we are again. The royal order of the neglected ones. <laughs> New member, we welcome you. Jane, he had a little plan, a little plan, a little plan. For... Excuse me, please. Go right ahead. Well, I'm a fine one. I didn't know she was that close to falling. I still say doctors shouldn't marry outside the profession. Oh, shut up. I mean, shut up, honey. Well, if a little thing like this upsets her, I'd hate to think of the future. Well, I thought you'd be crying your eyes out. You don't cry when you get knocked cold. Why aren't you downstairs talking about the badly cooked dinner and the half-baked hostess? I came up to apologize. I'm sorry I made that crack about your plan. It's all right. I must have looked pretty silly to you all. A little. Things I don't know about being a doctor's wife. Do you think Mildred Tracy is right? Do you think I am the wrong wife for Bill? Mildred didn't say that. She practically said it, and Bill's mother did say it. Oh, that old... Well, now you know why Bill's father died young. Would you tell me something? Did you all expect Bill to marry Helen? Why are you changing the subject? I'm not changing it. It's just part of what I'm up against. Tell me about Helen. 
I guess most of us did expect Bill to marry Helen. And the news about you may have been a shock to a couple of individuals. But so what? Bill said he wasn't in love with her. I can believe that. But a lot of people take a lot of things for granted. Helen and Bill's mother may be among them. So it seems I came along and upset a few apple carts. Well, they're going to stay upset. Sure they are. Now, if you'll just realize that you're not going to have the kind of married life you dreamed about, instead of the long, quiet evenings by the fireplace, you're going to get a slammed door, an empty chair at dinner, and a voice on the telephone. That's not very romantic, is it? Well, there's one thing you can do about it. All I can gather is I'll be living with a stranger full of secrets. What can you do about that? You can start having babies. Well, you're married to a doctor. They'll cost practically nothing. What do you think I am, a neurotic cow? You asked me what to do, and I told you. Well, if that's such good advice, why haven't you had a few yourself? Because I didn't know what was wrong with me until I watched you tonight. Family would be nice. I hope Bill's in favor. All men are in favor, originally. Let's go and finish our coffee. I hate to face those women. I know exactly how you feel. But, come on. One of the great prices you have to pay for being a woman is having to face other women. Dear, sorry I had to walk out on you. Didn't. Did everything go all right? Fine. I saved you a plate. You'll find it in the warmer. Thanks. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. specifically asked for Sunday breakfast in bed. Oh, the fishing season opens next week. I figured I'd better check my tech. Well, speaking of fish, when are they going to find out from that test if I'm going to spawn? A test? Oh, darling, you've got a perfect right not to forgive me. Perfect right. What does that mean? I got your report yesterday. Positive. You're pregnant. Sorry if I got to tell you. You're a little bit anemic, but don't worry. Here's some iron calcium. Several kinds. You better start taking them. You forgot to tell me. While I waited and waited, gnawing my soul to the bone, you forgot to tell me. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you right away, honey. But forgetting didn't change your condition. That's not one bit funny. I sure hope it's a girl. I don't care what it is, so long as it's normal. I'll arrange an appointment for you at Pete's office tomorrow morning for a preliminary. Preliminary? Public and blood test. They're routine for all women. You simply want to be sure that nothing happens to you and the baby. Oh, Bill, I can't go to Pete. Why not? I, I, I know him too well. Too well for what? Well, I'd be embarrassed and he would too. Don't be silly. Examining you would be about as embarrassing to Pete as checking an engine is to a garage mechanic. Well, thank you for setting me straight. And while I'm there, shall I have Pete check my oil, too? Pete, that little nature talk you gave me is a wonderful tonic. I feel like a Wright brother about to produce his first little aeroplane. How can you be so enthusiastic about your work when all of us biddies are such drab characters? I'm not interested in the characters. I'm interested in the process. 
Well, chum, being a doctor's wife, you can understand that as a normal case, you need me about as much as a rabbit needs a midwife. In approximately six and a half months, you can lie down in the nearest field. You're about as romantic as Bill. What do my tests show? Well, let's see. RH positive, RBC 4 million 1, hemoglobin 10.3 grams, leukocytes 6,400. I'm sorry, I forgot this is all double talk to you. But what it adds up to is that except for being slightly anemic, you're okay. Is that something I should take? I mean, some special prescription? Well, here's some iron and calcium. Oh, yes, here's some newfangled vitamin combination. I don't know anything about it, but try it and let me know how it works. Probably no good, but take a lot of it. Well, isn't there something more I should know? Uh, shouldn't I take walks and have a special diet or something? Well, here's your diet and a list of instructions. Unless you plan to resemble a blimp, you should take walks. Lots of housework and less resting. Do you mind if I take those walks inside while I do the housework? Just see to it that you get plenty of exercise. Especially pushing yourself away from the table. Is there a Bill playing golf on Wednesday? I don't know. All I know is I feel about as important as a flower pot. See you soon. Mrs. Raymond? Oh, Doctor, this is awful. Even the smell of food makes me sick. I didn't know it was going to be like now, this. No, no, Mrs. Raymond, you're undergoing a perfectly normal process. Can this visit to my husband's office mean? Don't be so coy. You know perfectly well it was your idea. It certainly was my idea. Now I'm having one, too. Maggie! How wonderful. Thanks. How did Pete act? I beg your pardon? I mean, when you first found out. He tossed a bunch of samples at me. I do think he patted my back once. I thought it would be different somehow. Sort of a tender moment to cherish forever. Like Myrna Loy and William Powell. Oh. Say, didn't Pete mention to you that I was going to have a baby? No. He didn't? Not a word. Why, that's so and so. See you later. What on earth do you think you're doing? Ma'am, that's about the most unnecessary question I ever heard. Get this done before you got back. What happened? GP needs his house. I mean, the grateful patient who let us rent it. He has no right to put us out. We have a lease for one whole year. The man needs his house. He's a nice fellow and a prompt paying patient. That's that. So, you yourself deliberately throw us into the street. No, oh, no. I bought a house from another GP. I mean, I made a down payment. Talk about lucky breaks. You bought a house without even consulting me? Is this all? Yes. We could have handled this little load with a pickup. I kept this from you, darling, because I didn't want you to become upset in your condition. I packed your things for you. In barrels, I suppose. Yes. You and your keeping things from me. Instead of this sudden shock, I'd rather know right along that things are getting worse and worse. What's worse? The fact that we now have a house we can call our own? I mean, in ten years? What I'm saying is you have no right to buy a house without my having seen it. But I've seen it. I had to act fast. All right. What's it like? I don't have to describe it to you. You even gave me the photographs. Of course, Jane, you have to realize that houses are almost impossible to get these days. Stop preparing me for the worst. I'm trying to tell you what a bargain we got. There you are. Where could you duplicate that for $12,000? You couldn't buy the four walls for $12,000, let alone all that furniture. It's in a good neighborhood, too. School's only three blocks away. Doesn't look bad. Well, now that you've bought it, why sit around looking at pictures? Take me to it. Sure, it's only ten minutes from here. On the way, I'll drive you past the school. Forget about the school. We have six years to look at that. Could this be the right street? The right street and the right house. But it's so different. Bill, you said you saw this house. When? Let me see. He was my first patient. Six years ago. Oh, no. Have you actually signed the papers? I spent our last dollar closing the deal. The grown man. Six years ago. Wait. All it needs is a coat of paint and a part-time gardener. 
You know, all these houses are a lot alike in construction. A few little alterations, and ours will be the prettiest one on the street. Meanwhile, I'm supposed to sit back in the paint and nails and have a baby. I'm sorry, Jane. I had no idea the man could have let the place run down like this. All I can say is that I, I trusted him, and I'm sorry. Don't feel that way, dear. After all, it is ours. And it's a roof over our heads. The furniture. He didn't say anything about taking it. Did he say anything about not taking it? No, but you can see it for yourself in the photographs. with no furniture. Let's look at the rest of the house. I think furniture is a nuisance, too. There's a chair in the way you always find yourself sitting down. I have some wonderful GPs who do carpentry work in things. You talk about a GP after this? Well, one rotten apple doesn't spoil the whole barrel. Or does it? spent our last dollar on this house, how on earth are we going to buy any furniture? You need money for a down payment at least. These things work out. Jane? Look, at least he didn't take everything. Here we are with a place to sleep, a refrigerator, and a stove to cook on. Actually, what more do we need? Moving, men. Where should we put your stuff? Just leave it anywhere. Dump it on the front lawn. Leave it in the hallway, please. I know how horrible this place looks to you, honey. But as you said yourself, it's a roof over our heads. We'll fix things up somehow. The furniture we can buy from week to week without rushing into it. the position? Left occipital anterior. Will it be a normal delivery? Perfectly normal. You won't have to do an episiotomy? I don't think so. If you did, what kind would you do? Probably a median. Is it absolutely necessary? I just told you it probably won't be necessary at all. How is she? Fine. Is the caudal anesthesia working? Certainly. Don't let her suffer any pain, you understand? You can see for yourself she isn't suffering. She's under sedation. I doubt if she'll even remember being here. Don't touch her. What's her pulse and blood pressure? 96 and 88 over 60. Did you hear that, Pete? Yes, I heard. More gloves. Look, everything's proceeding normally if you let us alone. The best thing you can do for Jane is wait outside. Will you please? Get out.
Bill. You have a cigarette? In ten years, this has never happened to me before. You saw her every day. You never suspected anything, did you? Suspected what? Twins, a girl and a boy. I don't care if they're triplets. How's Jane? She's fine. Twins? Good afternoon. I'm late. Good afternoon. Why are you late? After school, I walk all the way here. It is the springtime of the year, and I love to breathe. I used to breathe in the spring, too. Will you please hurry? I thought on the doctor's birthday, the dinner would be late. No, the doctor has promised for the first time in his life to be on time. Will you change into your uniform so that we can have the sandwich of the open face? Jane! In the kitchen! You kept your promise. This is wonderful. Maggie has taken an oath to drag Pete here by 6 o'clock, and we can have cocktails and some of Suki's sandwiches. Happy birthday, darling. Thanks, dear. Jane, the darndest thing has happened. Is it bad news? Yeah, exactly. Read it. Helen Porter. So she finally finished her internship. Mm-hmm. You can see by the telegram that she expects me to meet her at the airport. It'll be just about dinner time. Happy birthday, Doctor. Thank you, Suki. Suki, will you take the children up to their room? I've already fed them. Well, this wouldn't be the first time I've delayed a dinner. You go ahead and meet her. I should be back by 7.30 easily. And it'll be a good opportunity for you to tell her that she isn't going to be your associate. Why should I tell her that? You've known all along I promised her a place in my office, and you haven't said a word. I haven't said anything because I, I... I didn't think she'd have the nerve to try to hold you to your promise after you married me. Are you out of your mind? What is marrying you got to do with taking Helen Porter into my office? Well, if you insist on classing this as a professional matter, I can't argue with you, Bill. But will you do something for me, please? Will you ask her here tonight for dinner so that I can meet her? Of course. I don't know what you've heard about her, but I know you're intelligent enough to want to judge people for yourself. I'm sure there'll be no more argument about her after you've met her. I've got to make one house call on the way to the airport, so I better get going. I'll see you later. Hello? Jane? Maggie? The darndest thing has just happened. Yes, I know. You couldn't possibly know. Pete just telephoned a moment ago. If you weren't married to a doctor yourself, you wouldn't believe this. Pete not only forgot about your dinner tonight, but he invited an old college pal to our house. Maggie, you've got to be here tonight. Will you let me finish? Now get this. After Pete forgot about your dinner and invited the pal to our house, he just telephoned from the hospital that he's tied up and I'll have to carry on alone. Jane, I hate to bring a perfect stranger into your home. Of course bring him along. I'll not only welcome him, I'll even provide him with an unattached female. Really? Well, I didn't know you were acquainted with any of those things. When did you meet her? I haven't yet. It's Helen Porter. Goodbye now. Helen... Jane! Hello? Jane! Where are you? What's this about... Shh! as I was about to say when you so rudely interrupted. What's this about Helen Porter? Bill is meeting her at the airport tonight and bringing her here for dinner. It's as simple as that. Well, that's either simple or simple-minded. Well, that's a fine dinner party for you, a bunch of strangers. I like it that way. How's your stranger? Oh, honey, we're in luck. Pete just mentioned him as Bruce. But do you know who he is? Dr. Bruce Gordon, the famous psychiatrist. Really? Huh? I've never heard of him. But then what have I heard of lately? Oh, I wouldn't want to be alone with him for long. He's so mild-looking, and yet there's a kind of something about him. We're just not used to being around men. Let's go down before Suki drools all over him. Jane, shh. He told me that all my life I'd be surrounded by people. He said that I had a certain magnetism that attracts all living things. It's a good thing you didn't stay at home with him alone. Suki. That's a charming name. Yes, Doctor. 
The doctor likes a sandwich of the open face? Not yet, Suki. So you're Dr. Gordon. I'm happy to meet you. This is very gracious of you, Mrs. Wright, to take a complete stranger into your home. But I'm happy to have you, Doctor. Oh, you both are so charming. It would have been a very lonely night for me in a strange city. Won't you sit down? Won't you sit down? Oh, forgive me. <laughs> but you took me completely by surprise. Oh, how? I hope you won't be offended, but your walk, it fascinates me. <laughs> For a moment, I thought I was back on the island of Bali. <laughs> uh, have you lived there? You mean that island where the women balance things on their heads? I spent many months in the South Seas. The Balinese women were among the most graceful creatures I had ever seen. And suddenly I meet an American woman with that identical walk. I never noticed anything about her walk. It's amazing. Hasn't anyone ever mentioned it to you before? Your uh, husband, perhaps? Now, I'll show you what I mean. Mrs. Wright, would you be so kind as to walk to the hall and back? Just naturally, not thinking about what I have said? Well, I can't help thinking of it. This, this is embarrassing. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Let me see. You see what I mean? The hips. Have you ever seen such exotic grace in an American before? She never walked that way before. I certainly did. I don't know how I'm walking, but it's no different than I've ever walked. I've uh, seen photographs of the Balinese women. Are they really as attractive in real life? Simply look into your own mirror. Tonight. Uh, shall we have martinis? A wonderful idea. Let me mix them. I never knew Balinese women drank martinis. This is amazing. Simply amazing. You're telling me. We're having roast beef tonight, Doctor. I hope you like it. If I were asked to describe your walk, what is her first name? Jane. If I were asked to describe your walk, Jane, I would call it the perfect example of the poetry of sex. I, I will mix the martinis. It's the least I can do for such a charming hostess. I, I'd better check the roast. Suki. How's the roast? Oh, I don't know. Is the doctor ready for the sandwich of the open face? Don't rush things. There's plenty of time. You know, Maggie, as a psychiatrist, I am completely baffled by your personality. Why? One moment, you're a warm, magnetic person. Then suddenly, you're as cold and mysterious as... As an oriental queen. <laughs> you must have Pete and the merry-go-round trying to follow your changing moods. You seem to forget that Pete's an obstetrician. He has no time to worry about moods. The fact remains that you offer a very intriguing challenge to a psychiatrist. Really? In what way? Why do you have these two fascinating personalities? Is it because no man actually has ever tapped your emotions? Is it because you yourself fear your great capacity for love and escape to the cold heights of indifference? Which are you, Maggie? Hot-blooded animal or cold-blooded queen? I don't know. Dr. I... Gordon, would you take the tray into the living room? Oh. My husband should be here any minute with his guests. Jane, the efficient housewife. That's incredible. The adjustment of subordinating your exotic personality to that of your husband's, that must have been tremendously difficult. Well, I had the same trouble. Oh, you both were wrong in sublimating yourselves. Such sacrifices aren't appreciated by the average man. Uh, you must bring your real selves into the open, naked and unashamed. Suki. The hors d'oeuvres. Jane? 
I suppose I should have checked before I came down here. Now I find out the plane was grounded in Phoenix and will be at least an hour late. What do you think I should do? Do? Well, I suppose it would be silly to rush home and rush right back. I can delay dinner some more if you're sure about the time. I can't be sure because they're not sure. Look, you go ahead with the dinner and I'll get something to eat around here while I'm waiting. I'm sure that Helen wasn't expecting to have dinner with us anyway and I'll bring her up the house just so you can meet her. Well, all right. But get here as soon as you can. And remember to order something special for dinner in honor of your birthday. Bye, dear. So you seem to be doing all right without us. Jane, this is Helen Porter. Helen, my wife. I'm happy to know you. And this is Dr. Bruce Gordon. Uh, Miss Porter. Dr. Porter. Doctor. Doctor. I hate to leave so abruptly, but I, I hadn't noticed the time. I'll go with you. I promised the babysitter I'd be back by 10. Oh, you can't leave now. I must apologize for being so late, but I simply had to go to my hotel room to freshen up. Excuse me. Jane? Is something out of joint? I'll be seeing you around, Helen. We must have lunch soon. Of course. I said you can't leave now. Oh, thank you for everything, J uh, Mrs. Wright. Uh, good night. Good night, Bill. Good night, lady. I'll call you tomorrow. May I take your things? No, thanks. I'm staying just a moment. Poor Bill is probably worn out. Would anybody like a drink? Bill and I had a little something at the hotel bar. Just one. Nobody asked you how many you had. You're a grown man. Bill said Pete would be here with Maggie. No, Pete couldn't come, so Maggie brought Dr. Gordon. That big fake. Is he the one that's responsible for your dancing exhibition and that walk? He's one of the most brilliant and understanding men I've ever met. Are you saying psychiatry's a fake? Gordon has nothing to do with reputable psychiatry. He's made a fortune catering to scatterbrained women who simply needed nothing but a well-placed hairbrush. Now that I've met your charming wife, I'd like to go back to the hotel. As your new associate, I don't want to be late my first day. I'm sure Bill wouldn't mind taking you. And now that we're all one happy little family, no one will mind if I go to bed. Good night, you lucky people. Jane is a little tired. Of course. Perhaps I'd better take a cab. A cab? Oh, don't be silly. Oh, I thought you were asleep. Naturally. You've been gone over an hour. I didn't know it was that late. Naturally, being with Helen. Well, she was telling me some of her experiences as an intern. Naturally. Will you stop saying naturally? You've been acting silly all evening. Silly? How would you know? You haven't been here all evening. Bill Wright, I've done as you've asked. I've met Helen Porter and judged her for myself. And all I can say to you is I don't want you to have that designing female in your office. Designing female? How can you make a crazy statement like that when you barely met the woman? You heard me. I'm asking you to keep that woman out of your office. Jane, I don't think you realize you're trying to dictate my professional life. I told you I made a promise to take Helen Porter in as my associate. And so you're going to take her in? Yes. No matter what I may decide to do. What do you mean? What in the world has happened to you? Nothing's happened to me. I, there are just some things I can't put up with, that's all. I, I, I'm an incurable romantic who's married to a man who's married to his work. And now you're going to join hands with another woman. What chance do I have against someone who's going to share your work, is able to talk with you about it, and actually will become a part of your life? I've had nothing but neglect as it is, but having Helen Porter move in is more than I can stand. Neglect? I tried to tell you before we were married that being a doctor's wife is no cinch. 
If you wanted your marriage to be one long honeymoon, why in the devil did you marry a doctor? Why didn't you marry some rich idiot who could afford to chase you around the house all day? So that's my trouble. I'm the type that should be married to an idiot. Your friends told me you shouldn't have married outside of your profession, but you're the first one to tell me what I should have married. Hello. Oh, yes, Mrs. Ilshanky. Jane, wait. No, he is not dying. That's a perfectly normal reaction. Come on, please. All right, Mrs. Olshanky. Why are you here? You told me Easter vacation I could work mornings and be off afternoons. Easter vacation starts. Was the doctor here when you arrived? I make special breakfast for doctor. He told me do not disturb you because you probably need sleep. Never mind the bed, Suki. Get the children dressed, please. Doctor liked breakfast very much. Dr. Wright's office. Oh, Mrs. Wright, did you want to speak to doctor? No, I was just wondering if he got to the office all right. I, I overslept. And has Dr. Porter started? Oh, yes, she's working like a beaver. Already on her third patient. That's, that's fine. No, there's no message, thank you. Just forget I called. Goodbye. Prescription should relieve the pain quickly, Mrs. Hadley. If you have any further discomfort, please call me. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Yeah. Wright's office. Yes, Mrs. Wright. I wasn't going to bother my husband, but on second thought, I decided he'd want to know. Will you please tell him that I, I feel very weak? I've taken my temperature, and it's... It's 101. Thank you. Goodbye. Suki! Suki, I'm not feeling very well, so I'm going back to bed. When doctor comes, say I'm upstairs. Do you want me to stay all day? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sure I'll feel much better later on. Just keep the children downstairs after you've fed them. Yes, doctor. Mrs. Wright said to tell you she's upstairs. Hello. Hello. What are you doing here? Bill was very busy. Besides, I thought we should become better acquainted. Did Bill send you here? No. But as his new associate, I feel obligated to make routine calls. Ro Your fever was 101. Sometimes a fever can be induced temporarily by worry and nervous agitation. What outdated medical book have you been reading? Obviously, you are agitated. And perhaps with good cause. What do you mean by that? Your temperature is normal. It wasn't when I called the office. What do you mean I have good cause to worry? I didn't say that. I suggested it only as a possibility. You would know better than I if there's anything to worry about. Not better, but as well. Although I must admit it's hard to believe that some facts actually are facts until you face them. You see, I was raised in good, clean surroundings. Is that where you learned to move in while someone else was away? Well, all's well that ends well. And I'm glad your fever's gone. Dr. 
Dr. Porter, you seem very talented. Have you ever thought of opening your own office? Oh, no, Mrs. Wright. There's so much for me to do right where I am. You better stay in bed, just in case that agitation starts up again. Jane, why didn't you answer the telephone? Well, what is all this? Is it any surprise to you after last night? Besides, I've talked with your new associate again. And since you've made your decision, I've made mine. Those cases of canned goods belong to the children. I'll pay you later for these two cans of salmon. You talked to Helen? What about? If I tried to repeat the conversation, I wouldn't believe it myself. She's as slippery as an eel. I couldn't get away at first after I telephoned, so I asked Mother if she'd come over here and find out if anything was wrong. Has she been here yet? I wouldn't know. I've been too busy packing to answer telephones and doorbells. You're really leaving? But after one little argument. This is not because of an argument. I'm neither mentally nor emotionally capable of being a doctor's wife and sharing my husband with another woman. And you've given me no choice in the matter. Will you let me explain how utterly ridiculous this is? No, thank you. Will you please call a cab? Where are you going? I don't know. But the children and I will be completely out of your life. And I won't ask for any alimony. Who said anything about alimony? I did. I had a good job before, and I can get one again. Will you please call a cab? I won't call a cab until you know where you're going. You can't take my children and head for nowhere. Now they're your children. You barely know them. Shall I call the cab myself? No, I'll call from upstairs. Seaside Realty Company? Is Mr. George Small? Oh, hello, George. How's the stomach? Fine. Say, George, I've got a little favor I'd like to ask of you. Well, if you're not going to open the door, the least you can do is to lock it. I didn't know it was you. I was about to call the police. Bill asked me to come over. He couldn't get you on the phone. I know. He's upstairs. He said you had a little quarrel. It's more than that, as you can see, I'm leaving. I've seen it from the day I met you. <laughs> Too bad you had to wait until helpless children are involved. Well, you must admit I've had nothing to do with this. I've stayed out of your lives completely. If you mean you've been sitting back waiting for this to happen, I agree with you. Well, what should I have done? Close my eyes to the fact that my son was marrying a romantic fool who'd handicap him personally and professionally? Well, I'd better go upstairs and see Bill. Fantastic. Why can't we part like adult people? All I asked you to do was to call a cab. A cab couldn't handle all this, and besides, you wouldn't know where to go. A cabin at the seashore in April, and the nearest telephone five miles away. Yeah, it was lucky to get that in such short notice. GP said you could live there free till the summer season starts. You and your grateful patience. I wonder if the twins are asleep. I haven't heard a sound from them. Don't worry about them. Mother's a nurse from way back. Tell Wright there's one thing I want you to get straight. After you drop us at the cabin, don't you ever come back, ever. All right, all right, if that's the way adults are supposed to part. She'd better hurry up so we can get there before dark. Stop ordering me around.
Why don't you say it? Why don't you say it and have it over with? Say what? That it was all my fault. If I hadn't offered to stay and watch the children, this never would have happened. Do you know why I offered to stay and watch them? To make sure you'd really leave Bill. Mother, there were reasons for doing what you did to your own affair. But please, please don't feel guilty about the children. They're so quick. It could have happened to anyone who was taking care of them. I know you're praying for them just as hard as I am. That's all that matters. need some of this tonight anyway. We'll take the children first. I'll get the cribs and whatever bag you need. That one, on the bottom. You look so tired. Poor kids, after those emetics and stomach pumps, they're completely exhausted. Will it be all right for me to take them tomorrow? Probably. I'll check them before you leave. And I'll have a moving van pick up your baggage. I must thank you for everything, Bill. The way your friends treated the children was simply wonderful. I've never seen so many doctors and nurses in my life. They're fine people. All of them. nurse sleep at a time like this. I'm going to spend the night with them. You're going to stay here? You couldn't drive me out of here tonight with a baseball bat. But I was going to... I'll sleep downstairs. You take our room. I'll get the cribs. Bill, Helen Porter called. She... She said it was very important. Well, she probably heard about the children. In case you've forgotten, you were going downstairs to get the cribs. Oh. I talked to Helen. She's leaving to work at a big clinic in Chicago. She asked me if I'd mind. Go get those cribs. Mother. Yes? Is Bill telling the truth? Well, of course he is. How do you know? Well, I... I'm going to find out somehow. I'd like to find out from you. If you were my age, you'd realize it's often good policy to leave well enough alone. I'm not your age. What made Helen Porter decide to leave town? I did. You? How? I simply threatened to tell Bill how she and I were deliberately planning to break up your marriage. You were in on it. Yes, from the day I made up those lies why you couldn't possibly be happily married to a doctor. Oh, frankly, I was convinced that Bill would be happier with Helen. And until tonight, I was determined to make it come true. Now, you know what kind of a mother-in-law you have. Aren't you proud of me? I certainly am. Sorry that call came through, darling. But I can't ignore a hospital patient. That's all right. Tomorrow we'll go up to that GP's cabin with the kids for a whole week. No, thanks. I prefer to be neglected right here. It's 
It's almost too good to believe. Think of it, together again. Together again.